Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some old school magic cards. Now, the magic cards that were from Legends, Arabian Nights, and Odor, including Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited, they have all been going up a lot. So I studied it a little bit more, and there is a huge supply gap between Unlimited and Revised. So there is far fewer cards printed from this generation than you would even expect. And each new RTR, each new Kaladesh, each new block has way, way too many cards compared to the older sets, which were not printed all that much. The older sets are becoming collector's items. And we know this because this card as you can see, a battle from Zendikar was, looks like a $10, maybe a $12 card. But then it went up, it went up, and today it is an $80 card. What does this card actually do? For one, in double white, you get a 2-2 first strike flying. I'm not kidding you. This is an $80 card. And creatures were not very strong back in the day. And this was considered one of the stronger creatures in white aggro. But today, if you told me, hey, for one in double white, we'll get a 2-2 first strike flying. And we're going to make it an $80 mythic. You would be laughed out of the game store. Other cards that have been trending up. And it's a unique pattern which I don't quite understand. But obviously I benefit from greatly. Every single card, no matter how bad it is, and Imprison is the worst of the... Uh, it's. You should Google Imprison right now, and you won't believe what it does. It's almost completely useless. One black enchant creature, pay one each time target creature attempts to attack, block, or tap. That action is prevented, and the creature becomes tapped. Destroy enchantment if mana is not paid. How is this... How do we compare this to something like, I don't know, Fatal Push, which is also one black at instant speed, but in prison is now almost a $5 card. It's just so absurd. Some of the card prices on Odor, and the answer has to be it's a collector's item. You might say, oh, well, there's this old format that no one plays and no one ever has a deck, card 9394. I truly don't believe that's the reason it's an a fad and I've never seen anyone with a 93, 94 deck. I made one myself, but it was like a mono black deck. In prison, I, I, compared to today, it's baffling, right? Like if they printed this card today, this card wouldn't even be worth the cardboard it is printed on. It would be maybe bulk. And if they tried to print this card as a rare, which this card is, people would be seriously upset. Now, what about the good cards? What about the good cards? So that's all the crappy cards, right? The good cards are stabilizing. And the interesting part about cards like Library of Alexandra, which we all know is a good card. It is a tier one card and very good in control decks. Drawing extra cards from a land Pretty powerful, if you ask me. Especially since you can produce a one colors manner anyway. It's only a real added benefit. When you talk about cards in the $800, they've been pretty steady. So as you can see, it spikes during Eternal Masters because people want to play Vintage. And then it's been up, down, mostly down, and then up again. One of the interesting things about older cards is the conditioning makes it very difficult to actually track price and you can see in euros it's less than half off one of the interesting parts about europe is the prices are just most of the time it's about half off maybe more but sometimes about the same sometimes it's even more and it's interesting to look at the european prices of older cards because they didn't get the older cards yet they are willing to pay less, although they have a better environment, supposedly. 
Now let's talk about this card. This card is terrible. It's two double black, so you might not be able to see the two, but I guarantee you there is a two. I, I don't know if this is a misprint. Is there a two in this one? Okay, let's check if there's a two. Um, it's really hard to read. I'm gonna pull up the eternal. Yeah, it's two double black. Two double black, what do you get? You get a five five. It deals one damage to you during your upkeep. For four mana, you get a five five. My goodness, that sucks. And you lose life. Okay, just imagine that for a moment. If they printed a mythic that was four mana for a five five, and you lost one life. And that was a good card. No way would that be considered a good card. No way would that be considered something people would be like, oh great, I wanna open that mythic. Tamagoyf is way bigger. And even beyond Tamagoyf, you have Grim Flare, you have just multiple creatures for two which are just huge or have very unique abilities. Snapcaster Mage, much better. So when you talk about these old collector's cards, they truly are just collector's cards. They're not powerful, especially the creatures. When magic first came to existence, the artifacts were really good, the spells were incredible, but the creatures were just really bad. The creatures would always get killed. And it would come down to whoever had the best spells. Now, when we took, take a look at something like the Mitre, Mitre, it's terrible, but it's on the reserve list. And a lot of what cards we're talking about, if not all of them today, are cards on the reserve list. And that adds to the collector collectability. Now, interestingly enough, in June, we get a really special announcement. Magix has survived, I believe, 25 years. It's some type of important anniversary. Could it be about the reserve list? I hope so. I'll be very frank. I own lots of reserve list cards just kind of from buying bulk. And I don't really know why they are the price they are. The first thing that would happen is not all the pricey cards would go down. It's this type of card would be reprinted to ob Oblivion and then be worth five cents. There's just no reason this card should be $13, right? If you can compare this card to standard cards, it is more valuable than 98% of all standard cards. Look at what it does. Free, draw one card from your library every time a artifact of yours goes into your graveyard. Can only let you draw one card per artifact destruction. May not be used when you destroy an artifact to gain benefits from another card. I mean, come on now. So we looked at a 2-2 or first strike that was $80. I guess it also does flying. We looked at a fatal push, but a horrific fatal push, which is $5. Now we're going to look at Hellfire. Two triple black. All non-black creatures are destroyed. Hellfire deals X plus three damage to you. X is the number of creatures placed in the graveyard. You might say, ah, this is a one-sided damnation for our Plague Wind, right? Plague Wind costs nine, and it's one of my favorite cards. But it doesn't, it doesn't hit you, right? The whole point is maybe you are playing an all-black deck, and therefore when you Hellfire, it won't hit you. The same can be said for your opponent. If your opponent is also playing black, this is not a great card. So it is situational, and if anything we know... A card can be incredibly strong, like Browbeat, but if you give it a situation where it can perform poorly, then it's not going to be good. Is Damnation strictly better? Yeah, because you can play around your own Damnation, just like you would play around this. So Hellfire is a $37 card. Should it be reprinted? There's no way this card is more pricey than Damnation. I think Damnation's at twenty twenty five right now. Lastly, Spirit Link. As many of you know, I probably own 50 copies of this card from just buying bulk. It is shocking, and I'm in awe that this is a $6 card, and it's buy listing for $2 now, which is okay. Yorp, it's very similar. When you do the exchange rate, it's about $6.
my suggestion is if you have an old collection or you can buy old collection from a friend, now's the time to buy it. I have never seen consistent growth this way on this type of card because it's not just a good card. Normally when cards go up, we talk about like really good cards, right? Or semi good cards or semi iconic cards like the, but we're talking about Spirit Link being $6. We're talking about Thunder Spirit being $80. These are not classically good cards. Now are they cards that people have used to play in the past and they can have very good memories about? Yes, and that is what's driving the price. I truly do it. Like Spirit Link is not $6. No one's gonna pay you $6 for Spirit Link. But for $2, $3, someone will pay it, no problem. Because it is old, it is one of the more iconic cards. I remember playing it in, I think it was Mirage or something as well. And it was just such a good card. It's such a good card for a new player. Like when I was playing Legends, I didn't know that the life gain was bad. So everyone who's a new player pretty much begins with like, oh, 20 life? Well, what if I put this on Path of Warriors? Now I gain six life a turn. Pretty good. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.